Welcome to Inside Lake Forest. I'm Eileen Weber, your host, and today we're visiting with Craig, the sole proprietor of Grand Cru. Why drink the same old wine when you should branch out and try something new? Let's step inside. Hi, Craig. Great to meet you today. Hi. Nice to meet you as well. Thank you. Now, you're here at Grand Cru. Tell me about how you got into this business. Uh, so, Grand Cru uh, started in 2006 in Arlington Heights. Um, I went to culinary school um, right out of high school. Um, so, I worked in restaurants and uh, managed restaurants in a number of different states. And uh, just can only do that for so long. So, I decided mm -hmm. to... Um, try something different and started selling wine about uh, 15 years ago retail and I worked for a number of different people and about uh, well six and a half years ago mm -hmm. I started Grand Cru. So. Right now you were originally in Arlington Heights is that mm -hmm. correct and when yeah. did you make the move and open in Lake Forest? Uh, we closed uh, in Arlington Heights in November uh, in 2011 we opened here in December of 2011 so a little Perfect. bit over a year. Perfect. Well, you're certainly a welcome addition to our community. We're Thank happy you. to have you. Now, you told me before you're kind of a one-man show. Let's yeah. talk about that and how your experience plays such a role in your ability to sell wine. Um, I know that you have certain things like pairings and wine tastings here. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, you know, with any kind of business, when you're in charge, you are kind of got your fingers in everything. Mm -hmm. So um, I have my fingers in everything here. So not only do I taste, I buy... I mop the floors, I do the whole nine yards here. Um, and you know, that's greater control and people like to see the same people over and over. And when you come in, you kind of learn my palate and I learn your palate and mm -hmm. um, we kind of go forward from there. So, you know, you may not like one thing, but that gives me an idea of what you do and don't like and we can kind of steer you towards what you do like. Um, and I really enjoy cooking at, at home. So, um, you know, wine's better with food. So. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of a fun um, element to the business. Absolutely. Well, you, and like you said, you're building relationships with your clients that come in. So, um, you know, you could call me a novice wine lover, um, but is, I'm sure you have people come in of all different palate tastes and um, scales. So people who don't really have a lot of knowledge about wine versus people who have grand collections. Yes. Um, and that's what's great about the store. Um, we range from seven dollars up to you know a few hundred dollars. We have you know, um, I like to focus on smaller kind of family-run things. Mm -hmm. And there's always some overlap. You'll see some things that you know every store kind of carries, but uh, that's really the the main focus here of some smaller producers that you typically don't see everywhere. Great. So. And if clients come in here, Craig, and they are say having a dinner party, do they have the ability to come and buy like several cases of, of a particular wine that you both have sampled together? Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah, and we off, we do offer case discounts too. So, Great. Um, and if it's not here, I can always order it. That's uh, perfect. Really good to know if someone's got a favorite that you might not have in stock yeah. at the time. Yeah. Let's talk also about some of the Saturday tastings that you have that maybe some of our residents in the community don't know about because they haven't been here yet. Yeah. How do you typically handle those? Uh, so the tastings are every other Saturday. Uh, they're one to four. They're free of charge. Okay. Um, and you can come in, you can sample the things that we have. Um, sometimes there's a theme, sometimes there's no theme at all. Sometimes okay. it's just what we decide that we want to open that day. Um, and uh, there are a couple theme tastings at the end of June. We do a big barbecue tasting. So I do some uh, pulled pork and some brisket, and we do zins and syrahs, and then around mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, I do a traditional Thanksgiving spread, and we do all wines for Thanksgiving as well. Great. So definitely an opportunity for customers to come in and, and learn and be educated and pick out some favorites. Yeah, and what's better than, you know, coming in and trying wine and finding out you like something and you can buy it rather than just staring at a shelf going, I don't know if I'm going to like this or not. So. Or pick it by the pretty label. Exactly. Another favorite. <laughs> <laughs> well, Craig, I know you also sell beer and some spirits, so maybe we can start with a little mini tour of the store. Sure, yeah. Great. Craig. You mentioned to me that the wines are broken up by region and varietal. Yes. Could you tell me or maybe highlight one or two favorites as we kind of move around the store today? Sure. Yeah, so behind you is Argentina. Uh, there's some Chilean wines and South African wines. Okay. And then to the right here, we have Spain. Um, 
So Argentina, probably one of my favorite regions, just offers such a great uh, price point uh, and value. Felino wines um, are great. They're from Paul Hobbs, who's a California winemaker. Mm -hmm. and he's been going to Argentina for about 25 years. And um, the Felino wines are the entry level for the winery called Vina Cobos. Mm -hmm. And Paul makes a kind of the wine in a, a real kind of rich international style. and. He does the same thing in Napa Valley, so you get great value comparative to what his Napa Valley wines are Super. from Argentina, you know, at half the price. Great. So, um, let's see, South African wines, you know, something different. The mm -hmm. Rats, uh, okay. the original Chenin Blanc. Um, Chenin Blanc is widely planted in South Africa. Um, it's a great alternative to Sauvignon Blanc, especially mm -hmm. from South Africa. Um, Chenin Blanc can really be a lot of different things. It can be bone dry like the rats. It can be sweet. It can be a dessert wine. Um, Chenin Blanc originally from the Loire Valley in France. Um, so Vouvray and things like mm -hmm. that. But it's just a great alternative. Um, something different that you may or may not pick up on your own. So great. Um, kind Excellent. of nice refreshing. And then while we're kind of moving along here, I see that you've got a lot of spirits up high. Um, probably so, you know us kids can't get at it. <laughs> exactly. But um, can you talk to me about some of the collections you have up here? A lot of the things I don't recognize. So the spirits thing kind of started a couple years ago. Um, more of as an add-on for customers that would come in and buy a bunch of wine and then say, oh, you know, I'm having a party and I need a bottle of gin or a bottle of vodka. Mm -hmm. And to kind of differentiate myself from your average everyday store, I started going out and finding kind of smaller boutique producers. Mm -hmm. um, and it really kind of spans the gamut. We have single malt scotch, bourbons, ryes, um, tequila, gin, rums. I have a, you know, a bunch of rum. I got on a tiki drink <laughs> binge a couple years ago. So I started buying a bunch of rum, cognacs, armagnacs. Um, so yeah, every time you come in, there may be something new on the wall of, of spirits. It's, Great. And it definitely gives our customers an opportunity to come in and buy a special bottle, say for their father who loves scotch. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's not just the same Johnny Walker exactly. that they normally would have. Exactly, yeah. Great. Well, as we continue to move through here, Craig, um, I'll have you again maybe point out to me like our next section yeah, of so wines. Yeah, so after Spain, then we start into France, and France is all uh, uh, by region. Okay. So we have Loire, Alsace. Um, Beaujolais, and then one of my big favorites, the Rhone Valley. Mm -hmm. um, again, I think is just one of the, the best values out there. You know, Cote de Rhone's, uh, mm -hmm. Gigondas, Chateauneuf de Pop, things like that. Um, I need to learn some more French so I can <laughs> speak with you. <laughs> well, that's what's great about the old world, especially with France and Spain. Nothing changes. So once you know what's what the rules are and mm -hmm. what the grapes are. It never changes. Wee oui, wee. Oui. So, exactly. <laughs> so here, what would you, um, you know, kind of maybe highlight as to our customers who are future customers who are watching as maybe a particular one they should come in and try out? Oh boy, for the everyday uh -huh. folks, um, you could do something like the Domaine Saint Guyane. Okay. It's a little Cote de Rhone, uh, 2010, is a spectacular re uh, vintage in the so south of France. Um, so this is just above Provence. Primarily Grenache with a little bit of Syrah. Medium bodied, think Pinot Noir, but a little bit fuller body than Pinot okay. Noir. Um, and then for the folks that are a little bit more spendy, um, I would do something like the uh, Clos Saint Jean Chateauneuf de Pop. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, primarily Grenache, um, and the Mauville brothers do a, a fantastic job. They've become one of the hottest producers in the Rhone Valley great. in the last few years. And again, 2009, 2010, great vintages. Uh, in this particular region. So. so, Craig, while we're making our way around to the domestic wines, let's hit on some of these uh, specialty beers that you have for the beer lover. If you've ever been to wine country, all the winemakers tell you that there's a lot of beer that goes into great winemaking. So, um, you know, we can't drink wine every day, so we have a pretty I don't want to say a large, but we got a bunch of beer here. Yeah. Um, mainly craft, American craft beer. Um, that's just what we sell here. Uh, uh -huh. We do have some imports. Um, and this is kind of a seasonal thing. So we try to have a lot of the seasonal um, new beers that come come out and 
when the season ends, we kind of move on. So, Perfect. Um, so oh, lots of new things on your shelf all the time. Exactly. Just like the wine, just like the spirits, there's always something new. So. It sounds to me like in order to really take advantage of your collection, Craig, people need to come in regularly. <laughs> yeah, well, and you know, it's just like anything. If you go to, yeah. you know, you go to the grocery store, you go clothes shopping, you always want to see something new. So, yeah. same thing here. You know, I get bored after a while, yeah. so you got to change it up every once in a while. But the good thing is, you mentioned <laughs> is if you if a customer doesn't see it, you can order it. Yeah, and that's a great thing to know. Now, I'm, as we come along here, I'm seeing some of, of my personal favorites yeah. that I've had, like the Frank family and Plump Jack. But so yeah, those, let's so this, talk about that. So this side is all the domestic wine. It's all by varietal. Uh, so we got a big wide selection of Cabernet here. Mm -hmm. um, again, we we run the gamut. We go from about twelve bucks up to you know the the kind of cool collectible the things. The big boys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and there's even more. Uh, we do have the 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 reserve room in the back that uh, there's some older things, some right. f harder to find things, smaller productions. And so. how about, I see um, sometimes you know whether you have it available in a large format yeah, bottle, we, so we, like a Magnum. Yeah, or. so I've, I'm a big large format f fiend. I buy a lot of large formats, not for myself, but you know for the store as yeah, well. Yeah, very fun. They're, well, like, they're a cool party thing. So. Yeah, they are. And it looks like you even um, carry some glassware. Some glassware, decanters. yeah, some Riedel glassware. Do have some decanters. Um, we do have carry more decanters as the as the holidays get closer. Mm -hmm. um, just what it is. <laughs> Super. So Cabernets, we okay. go to Merlots, then Pinot Noirs, which is a big uh, big seller here at Grand Cru, and then we have Chardonnays. Okay. And then up here in the front, we do Italian white wines and Italian red wines. Okay. Any favorites here in this section that you particularly oh, want to highlight? Oh boy. It's like a kid in a candy shop. Yeah. So much to use. <laughs> um, this is a spectacular little bottle. Okay. This is a Cortese from uh, Piedmonte. It's a white varietal. Um, it's a great alternative to Pinot Grigio. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people get stuck in a rut. It's always cool to try and drink new things. So, um, very clean, very crisp. I sell quite a bit of it. It's, t it's $10. So it's not like you're shelling out a lot of money to, to take a chance on something, you know, crazy that it's you've never heard of. It's a weeknight drinker, right? Exactly. Exactly. You've got the bottles for the special occasions and then you have your drinker bottles. Yeah. I can envision that you, even in the summer, that might be a really hot summer that's a, for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the big surprises, um, is that wine kind of sells all year. It's not Great. just something that you know, you're going to drink on, you know, in the middle of summer. So uh, it's got a lot, a lot of appeal to it all year. Um, and then Perfect. up here in the front, then I have uh, sparkling wines pretty much from around the world. Um, mm -hmm. anything that's bubbled. Um, so I've got, uh, what I focus on here is a lot of grower champagne, uh, rather mm -hmm. than the big houses. So really small producers, they only make, you know, a couple thousand cases where somebody, you know, in the big producer may spill that in a day. Okay. Um, sure. <laughs> yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And I see here just an example of one of the large format bottles of wine that you yeah. have. And it's great also to know that if you are running late, um, to a dinner party, I see you've got some wine bags. So yeah, we have gift bags, and then we also have a chiller that I do turn on. So if you need something cold, it only takes about four minutes to get. Oh cold. wow, that's great to know. You yeah. got a blast chiller or something yeah. that you can. Yeah, a rapid chiller. Fabulous. Now let's talk about where our customers can find you online. Um, can you tell me what your website is? Yeah, it's www.gcwines.net. Uh, okay. Our complete inventory is on there, so you can great. shop in the middle of the night in your pajamas. Um, you can find us on Facebook. Right. Um, both places will have all of our tasting uh, schedules on it. Um, Facebook is even better because you can Super. see you know, new things coming in and out. Um, we do have an e-newsletter as well. We send out emails about once a week or so just okay. telling people about upcoming tastings and things like that. Excellent. And your hours during the week are? Uh, Monday through Friday, 11 to 7. Mm -hmm. uh, Saturday, uh, 10 to 6, and we're closed on Sundays. Okay. So like a weeknight evening, um, you've got to run to somewhere. It's a great opportunity for just to come in here to your boutique store and pick out a nice, unusual bottle. I, I find that, you know, sometimes when entertaining, in my own case, that you hate to bring them always the same stuff they see. What a great opportunity to come talk to you, Craig, and pick out something that will be new and exciting for them to try. Yeah, yeah there's always something different here. So Great. Well, Craig, it's been a pleasure meeting with you nice today. Nice to meet you Thank as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Thank you for watching Inside Lake Forest. I hope you've enjoyed our visit with Craig today here at Grand Cru. It's been a great opportunity to learn more about wine, spirits, and beer. I hope you stop in and visit him soon.